And I would start off with uh, a few scripture verses where we see what Jesus is saying about love. And can we please turn in our Bibles to Mark chapter 12, verse 28 to 34. We'll read this portion first and then we'll continue. So Mark chapter 12, verse 28 to 34. Then one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together, perceived that he had answered them well and asked, What is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, The first commandment, the first of all the commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God and the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second like it is this. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. So the scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you have spoken the truth, for there is one God and there is no other but he. And to love him with all our heart, with all understanding, with all our soul, with all our strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. So when Jesus saw that he has answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So two very important things that Jesus is saying to them, the, the scribes and the, and the religious leaders were there with him in many instances. They were trying to trick him with, with questions to see if they can you know, hold him responsible for going against the law. And in this instance, they are asking him, what is the biggest commandment of all? And um, we all know this and we have heard about this in the last few weeks that we must love God with all our hearts, with all our mind, with all our soul and with all our strength. Praise the Lord. That is established and we all know this very well. But many times, you know, that, that interaction that is there between God and us and the love that is shared between us. He loves us and we love him. We forget the other part of these very important commandments that Jesus gave, which was the second part, which is love your neighbor as yourself. Praise the Lord. So let's not forget that. And I want to remind you all today of that. And don't forget that he said, love your neighbor and doesn't stop there. You have to love your neighbor as yourself. Praise the Lord. We all love ourselves. We all take care of ourselves. We all want the best for ourselves. In the same manner, Jesus is saying, as you love yourself, you must love your neighbor. Praise the Lord. Um, you know, Jesus is our role model. When we call ourselves Christians, we are confessing that we are Christ-like or we are trying to be like him. And we praise God that he did not just give commandments. He demonstrated how to love. He demonstrated to us how to love God, his father. He loved him very much that he even was obedient to him to the point of death. And then he also demonstrated to all the people who were there on this earth when he was around how to love the neighbors. Praise the Lord. So we don't have to look far. We don't have to look anywhere else to know how we can love our neighbor. All we have to do is to be like him, love like him, and do what he did. Praise the Lord. So that's what we'll be looking at. But before that, let's see what Jesus says and defines or demonstrates to us who our neighbor is. Because many times when you hear the word neighbor, all we think about is the person living next to us, on the left, on the right, in the front, at the back, in our houses, in our places where we're living, we just think about them. But we'll see what Jesus describes the neighbor is. And we find this in the parable that he gave of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. We are very familiar with this, but I'd like to read it out to all of you so that we can refresh our memories and see what Jesus is saying. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered rightfully. Do this, and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? So we thank God that he asked that question. He didn't ask that question out of, you know, the goodness of his heart. He wanted to be smart and trick Jesus. But we, we, we praise him. We, pray, we praise God for this man because because of that, we have a clear understanding of how we can be good neighbors and who our neighbor is. So Jesus gives him an illustration. He says, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho 
and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? That Jesus asked this, this teacher. And what was his response? And he said in verse 37, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Praise the Lord. That's our neighbor. It's not just the person living next to us in the communities that we, we are, where we are. Everyone that comes across to us in our walk on this earth is our neighbor. So today when you leave this place and maybe you'll catch a cab, the driver is your neighbor. If you sit in the bus, the passengers are your neighbors. When you go to your work tomorrow morning, your colleagues are your neighbors. Those who are going to school tomorrow, those are your neighbors. When you walk on the footpath, somebody passes by, that is your neighbor. Praise the Lord. And I believe that everyone that we come across, there is a purpose and intention of God that we are coming across those people. And we, who profess to be Christ-like, need to be loving like he did to all our neighbors. Praise the Lord. How did Jesus love people? There was no bigger one and no smaller person. Praise the Lord. There was... His love was for everyone and it was alike. There was no differences in the way that he loved people. So it didn't matter if people were rich or poor, he still loved them the same. It didn't matter if the people were clean or unclean, he loved them the same. It didn't matter if they were diseased or they were, you know, very well, he loved them the same. It didn't matter if they had big houses, if they had everything. Or they had, you know, a small house or not even a house. They were living on the street. He loved them the same. If It didn't matter if people considered themselves righteous and they were rulers and religious leaders or they were biggest sinners of all time. He loved them the same. It didn't matter if they came to him and they were nice smelling or, you know, there was disgusting smell coming out of, of their bodies and their clothes. He loved them the same. Big or small, clean or unclean, they were all the same for the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. He loved everyone regardless of who they were. And if we truly, truly call ourselves Christians, we must also do the same. Our love must be full of mercy. It is our trademark. Praise the Lord. You know, when uh, people are known for things and you may be known for your talents and your gifts, what does Christ say about Christians? He says, you will be known for your love. Praise the Lord. In John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35, we read, He says, As I have loved you, you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Amen? If I'm wearing a shirt and coat and tie, this is not my Christian identity. This is not my trademark. If I love people like he did, that is how I will be known for being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think these are some very important words of Jesus that were spoken to the people at that time and so applicable to us. Are we known for loving people? Or are we known as Christians just because we consider ourselves as Christians, we portray ourselves as Christians, we, we portray ourselves as religious and holy, we dress up nicely, we come to church, we carry our Bibles. But Jesus is saying very clearly, you will not be known by those things, you will be known how you love people. And people will know that this is my disciple. Because he loves people like how I have loved. And if we don't love our neighbors, then that trademark is not for us. That identity is not for us. Because we, we cannot call ourselves truly Christians. Because we may only love God, but we are not loving people. Our neighbors. Those goes together hand in hand. 
Remember how we read the scriptures when Jesus said, love God with all your heart and so on. And then he said, the second is this. And it is like the first, he said. He didn't say it was any less significant or smaller, not so important. It is the same. You must love God and love people. Because you love him and he loves you, you will love people. Praise the Lord. It will automatically come. We don't have to try to do that. Because if God's love is in us, we will start seeing people the same way that he did. So I'll present to you some very uh, simple points of how Jesus loved. Remember I said he is our role model. We look to him for everything. And now we're going to look to him and see how are we going to love our neighbors. Point number one that I'd like to make with all of you is he loved sinners. He hated sin, but he loved sinners. And he is showing us with those demonstrations of love that we should also do the same. That everyone is worthy of his love regardless of what they have done. How do we know this? We read in Luke chapter 19 verses 1 to 10. Well known story. I will not read it for you. Um, the story of Zacchaeus. Our children know this. We sing that song. Zacchaeus was a very little man. A very little man was he. He climbed up to a sycamore tree. For the saviour he wanted to see. Praise the Lord. So he was, a, he was considered to be a sinner. Somebody unworthy. Because he was a tax collector. And on top of that. He was cheating people. So if he had to take a certain percent, he would take more from the people. And he was making money by cheating. So people hated him. They didn't like him. They considered him to be one of the worst sinners of all times. And he was disliked and not loved by anyone. But when he heard about Jesus, he had the intention of, of seeing him. And he was a short man. So the Bible tells us he climbed on a tree. Jesus realized that he's there. And what did Jesus say to him? We read in verse um, um, let me just find it. Verse 5. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must stay at your house. Praise the Lord. Loving sinners. Hating sin, but loving sinners. Not only did he call him by his name, not only did he realize that he's hiding in the sycamore tree, he called him down and then he said, I am going to your house and I'm going to stay at your house. The house of a sinner, the house of somebody that is unloved in the community. And people would not go and stay at his house, but Jesus, he went and stayed at his house. Praise the Lord. What were the people doing? They were saying, look at him. He's going to stay at the house of a sinner. And they were, you know, upset with Jesus. But when we read the, we read the incident you know, and go to the other verses, we'll find that because Jesus went to his house, Zacchaeus realized that he was loved by God. And his life changed. What did he say? He says, I'm going to return all the money that I have taken from people. In fact, I'm going to return more than that. And Jesus says, today, indeed, salvation has come to this house. Praise the Lord. The demonstration of love. If we draw away from people who are considered to be sinners and not so good people, we are actually pushing them away from God. But Jesus was demonstrating to us that God loves every one of them. And if we just, you know, be like him, they will also realize the love of God in their lives. He could have passed him by. He could have ignored him. But it was the day of salvation for Zacchaeus because Christ and God loved them all. And Jesus went to his house, showed kindness. And that changed and transform the life of Zacchaeus. We find that he also showed the love of God to the woman who was found guilty of adultery. If you remember the story in John chapter 8, you know that the religious leaders brought to him in the temple a, a, a lady who was found to, be commit, to have committed adultery and they said the law says we must stone her to death. And we read that Jesus was writing on the, on the soil and he says whoever has not sinned throw the first stone. And after a while, there was nobody. Everyone was gone. And he says, I also do not condemn you. Praise the Lord. He showed love to the worst of the worst people. Those that the community did not want to accept, even want, did not want to allow them to live in their, in their presence because they would be stoned to death. But Jesus showed them love. He hated sin, but he loved the sinners. There are so many, many examples in the Bible where we see this and we must also become like him. That is our neighbor, yours and mine. Whoever we come in contact with, we must love them like Jesus did. On Friday, senior pastor was asking and we were discussing about, about our prisons. How many of us have gone to the prison? Not in, in the sense that you have been found guilty of something. And I hope that is never going to happen to any of you. 
But in the sense that how many of us have ever visited the prisoners? Those who have been condemned, found guilty by the law of this land. In fact, we don't even know how to gain access. Time for some reflection, isn't it? Because the ministry of Jesus, it was in the places where people were. In the places where people were suffering, where they were condemned, where they were dying, where they were sick and diseased, he went to them and he showed them love. How much more should we be doing? Praise the Lord. You know, no matter how much we enjoy sitting in this hall, enjoying the nice benches and the air conditioning, we will not be able to demonstrate the love of a neighbor if we do not go out and meet people and spend time with them. Hopefully, the Lord will move through many of our hearts today and one of us or few of us will start doing this ministry as well. Where we're going to the people and sharing the good news. Even those in the prisons, you know, even life sentences, that doesn't matter because God gives life. Praise the Lord. And they may not have freedom here on this earth ever again, but they can have everlasting freedom because of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And when they, when they finish the race here on this earth, they will be freed. Freed from this prison and freed from the prison of sin. If only we would go and share the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and love them like Christ loved the sinners. Praise the Lord. Point number two, he loved the poor and the needy. Every time we read in the Bible that he was ministering to them, every time, so many incidences we'll see that the poor were running to him, the needy were running to him, and he was meeting their needs. He did not reject them. He did not put them away. In fact, he sat with them, he ate with them, he went into their houses, he shared meals with them. And that just demonstrates to us how much Jesus loved the people, his neighbors. In Mark chapter 1, verse 29 to 31, we read of him entering into the house of Peter. Sorry, Simon and Andrew. And um, Simon's wife's mother was sick and Jesus went into their house. He was a fisherman, maybe not considered worthy of, of a religious leader to enter into their house, but he was there visiting them. And many times in, in the Bible we'll read Jesus entering into homes and communities where people were. He healed them, he taught them about the kingdom of God. He sat with them, he ate with them, he touched them to heal them. He cared deeply about the poor and those who were suffering. Praise the Lord. We read more of Jesus spending time in homes, in villages, in communities, in climbing hills, in getting onto boats to share the good news, walking by the sea, then we see or hear of him preaching in the synagogues. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's a lesson for us. We should be spending more time winning souls in the in the in the in the in the communities, you know, than sitting here and praying that God will help save people. I'm not saying don't come to church for worship services. That's completely different. But sitting here will not show the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter how much we come together and, and make plans and try to do things, we need to get out into the streets, into the homes, into the communities and start sharing and spending time with people so that we can show them the love of God. He went where people were. People, even if those places were dirty, they were smelling, they were full of flies and mosquitoes, disease, it was hot, it was cold, it was windy, it was raining, there was no convenience of cars, no air conditioning. He still went where people were and he loved them. Praise the Lord. Now we think of our own convenience. We need cars, we need you know, good vehicles, we need an umbrella over our head when we want to go into ministry. You know, when, when the men go out, we are very proud of them. But we should not wait for October only when the men go out. We all should go out. Praise the Lord. God has placed us with so many neighbors. It's our time to share the goodness of God with them. We hear our stories when the men go out, you know, how they climb mountains, uh, how they suffer physically to reach people. I think there's a story about how one time they were uh, bathing in the, in the water that had tadpoles in it because there was no other water available, you know. Sometimes they go and sleep at places where the frogs jump on them. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's what Jesus experienced as well when he was with the people. And we don't see him complaining. He was doing it over and over again, day in and day out. He was with the people, sharing the love of God. And remember, at that time, Israel and the surrounding countries, 
they were dirt roads. They were not, you know, tassel roads like ours or stone roads. They were dirt roads. How do we know this? That's why there was a, there was a law, a custom that every time you enter into a house, there will be pots of, you know, water outside. What do you need to do? Wash your feet. Remove your sandals. Wash your hands and your feet. If you remember the first miracle that Jesus did, he turned water into wine. That water was for washing of feet of the people who are coming into that house. And that was a custom. Why? Because that road had so much dirt that when you walk on it, your feet would be dirty. It would be having people walking by. It will be animals walking by, you know, dropping along some goody goodies uh, as they walk by. And when people will walk on it, they become dirty. And here he is our Lord, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, walking on those footpaths and streets, climbing hills, getting on the boats, fishing boats. And preaching the goodness of God in the kingdom of God. That's what drew people to him because he went to the people and showed them the love of God. Praise the Lord. We have to be like him. We have to love like him. We just don't have to love the rich and the well-to-do people. We don't have to just love those who have nice houses and nice buildings and who can offer us nice seating when we go to their homes and give us, you know, tea and, and good food. We have to love everyone. The same like he did. And Jesus did not hesitate to enter homes. He didn't hesitate to enter villages and communities. He didn't hesitate to touch people and heal them. He didn't hesitate to talk to everyone. And he didn't hesitate to love everyone. As they drew closer to them, they drew closer to God and realized that love. Praise the Lord. Shall we, shall we you know, say, Lord, change my heart so that we can start loving like Jesus did? Then only we can be truly Christ-like. You know, if somebody comes here wearing rags and not smelling so nice, how will you respond? Are you going to shift to the other edge of the, of the bench? Are you going to change your seat? Or if somebody who is a well-known sinner and, you know, is not doing so nice things, if he enters into this place, are you going to go and give him a hug? Many times we forget how Jesus was. Shall we ask him to search our hearts today so that we can start loving like he did. Not only loving God, but loving people, loving our neighbors. The third point, very quickly, he went to um, those who were considered unworthy, untouchables. You know, those people who were sick, those who uh, would not draw close to people and people would not draw close to them. He even went to those people. Uh, there's, there's were times of uh, leprosy outbreaks, you know that. Leprosy is a disease of the skin. Uh, it eats away your flesh and it starts to, you know, rot away. And it was um, contagious. So if you come in contact with somebody with leprosy, you'd get it as well. So they established some rules. If you get leprosy, you, you stay away from everyone. You separate from your family. You separate from the community. You don't come in contact with anybody else. And nobody will come in contact with you. Even to the point when you're walking by, you have to say, unclean, unclean, unclean. So that everyone in that area will know that a lep lepa is walking by. But what do we see our Lord doing? In Luke chapter 1 verse 40 to 42 we read, When a lepa came to him and said, make me clean, Jesus said, the, the word of God says, And Jesus moved with compassion, verse 41, Luke chapter 1 verse 41, stretched out his hand, Luke chapter 1 verse 41. Just want to draw your attention to the verse and I want you to please have a look and see. Luke chapter 1 verse 41. Is that the one? Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry. Then maybe I have given them the wrong text. But here when Jesus comes in contact with the, um, with the leper, you know what he does? He says, the word of God says, he stretched out his hand and he touched him. And he said, I am willing, be cleansed, and he was immediately healed. Praise the Lord. I would like to emphasize that he touched the untouchables. In the same manner, we, need, we know of the, of the woman who was um, suffering from the issue of blood for 12 years. If you remember, she came and she touched the hem of Jesus. She was un considered unclean, not to be worthy to be present or in touch with anyone. And Jesus did not get angry at her or criticize her or condemn her. In fact, he loved her and he called her my daughter. And we see the love of Jesus uh, you know, demonstrated. So praise the Lord, we need to be do the same, do the same, love people no matter who they are. 
Uh, point number four, he loved those who were in pain and loss. If you all remember the story of um, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, when uh, Lazarus died, the two sisters were very sad. What does the Bible say? The shortest verse. Shortest verse. Jesus wept. Praise the Lord. He was moved with empathy. He had compassion on them because he loved them. And because they were sad, Jesus was also weeping with them. Praise the Lord. We must weep with people. We must comfort them when they are suffering, when they have suffered losses. In the same manner, Jesus showed kindness and compassion to the people when they were suffering. Point number five. He loved others by serving them. Everywhere you'll see that Jesus was serving. He was serving and he was serving. He gave, gives an illustration to, to um, in, in, in his word in Matthew chapter 25, he talks about when the Son of Man will judge the nations and he's saying that he will separate the sheep from the goat. And uh, he points out that, you know, the sheep, they were the people who actually went and fed those who were hungry. He provided for those, you know, who needed things, gave, gave food to those who, you know, who needed it, gave water to those who were thirsty. And he's saying these are the real people who have shown and demonstrated the love that I've shown to them. In the same manner, we should be doing the same. Um, he also said the greatest you know, leader or greatest person or the biggest in the kingdom of God needs to be the servant of all. When the disciples were discussing with him and said, which one of them, which one of us are, are the greatest? You know what he said? He said, if you want to be the greatest, you have to be the servant of all. And with love comes service. We also read of Jesus washing the disciples' feet, demonstrating his love for them and saying that, you know, you... I am no greater than you, you are no greater than me. That's what he wanted to teach them. That everyone is the same and we all should serve each other with love. So he didn't just talk the talk, he walked the talk. Praise the Lord. He did what he preached. He told everybody to love each other and he demonstrated that love. He told everybody to serve with love, he demonstrated the same. And we have, to, we have this opportunity to be like him. And just want to encourage everyone today, please, let's be like him. Point number six, he loved them and he forgave them, even those who had wronged him. He says that we should, you know, love our enemies. Praise the Lord. And he demonstrated it. Remember the cross? When he was dying, he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. In fact, if anyone has the right not to forgive people, it is Jesus. Because he was crucified Yet he did not sin. He was persecuted even though he has not done anything wrong. And he took all our sins. He went on the cross. And he suffered the greatest injustice. Even to the point of death. And yet he said, forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. You know, people do little things to us. We carry it till our graves. <laughs> Isn't it true? Yeah, I've heard this phrase many times. You know, I will never be able to forgive what that person did to me. If only, if just imagine if God had that attitude, where will we be? None of us would be saved. We have done so much more, so much far worse against the Lord than what people have done to us. So no matter what has happened to us, please, let's love our neighbors and let's love our enemies and forgive them. Amen? The last point that I'd like to share with you is because he loved people, he loved his neighbors, he loved all those he came in contact with, he told them the truth, the truth of the word of God. Even if it meant people went away from him, even if it meant if it was hard for people to listen to, but he, because he loved them, he told them the truth about the kingdom of God, that there is no other way, that Jesus is the only way. There is no other truth but the truth of Jesus and the kingdom that he preached. And he said that. Even when we read the story of the Samaritan woman by the well who, was a, who had many husbands, Jesus told her the truth. Very politely, very lovingly, you know, he, he, he told her the truth about her life. It was a bitter truth, hard, hard to hear, but it changed and transformed her life. I'm not saying we start condemning and judging people and saying, you have done this, you have done that. But what we are trying to say is, we have to speak the truth about the kingdom of God and do it gently and with love like Jesus did so that people will turn from their wicked ways 
and come to accept him. Please remember that the crowd, we, we read in John chapter, I think it's um, John chapter 6 verses 60 onwards and you can read at home. We read that the crowd that Jesus was speaking to when he told them about you know, what it takes to be a disciple, many of them left. They were scattered. So please don't uh, you know, think that Jesus was rude to them. He was not. But it is because he spoke the truth, people did not like it and they went away. So there are times when we need to do that. There are times when we need to warn people. There are times when we need to stand up and say, this is the way God has loved you and he wants you to come back to him. We cannot do that with anger and judgment, but we can do that with love like Jesus did. Amen. So much to learn from him. All that we have to do is to look to the word, read what Jesus did and start loving our neighbors like he did. Praise the Lord. When I, when I search myself and when I think about myself, then I see, you know, we fail in these areas so many times. You know, we are so occupied with everything else. We are so occupied with spending time, you know, doing things for the Lord that we forget the other part of loving, which is loving our neighbors like ourselves. Going out to them. When was the last time that our church or when families or people and we got together, we went out into the streets? When was the last time when we went together to the communities? When was the last time that we went and gave food to people who needed it? Or went and cleaned somebody's house or rebuilt somebody? We were doing it before. We have done it over the last few years, you know, in, in bits and pieces here and there. But this should be part and parcel of our Christian life. We are, we are loving people every day. And individuals, as groups, as a congregation, that should be part of our lives. Praise the Lord. To love like Jesus is to sacrifice. It will take sacrifice. He said, you know, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. We will have to make sacrifices, but we need to love people. That is his command. I'd just like to refresh what I've shared with you. How can we love our neighbors? He loved the sinners. We need to love them as well. He loved those who were poor and had nothing. He loved those who were considered unworthy, untouchables. He, lo he loved those who were in pain and loss. He loved those um, where they needed to be served. He loved them and he forgave them. And he loved them and therefore he shared the truth of the Lord with every one of them. So we also need to love like Jesus did. And praise God that we have the Holy Spirit who will help us to love. Praise the Lord. Shall we all stand as we consider these words? Let's ask ourselves, how much have we been loving our neighbors? Let's remind ourselves that we need to love like he did. That we need to be loving our neighbors and not just ourselves. It's not enough to just love God and then we forget about the neighbors. It's not enough to love God and then we forget about others. It goes hand in hand. We need to love him with all our heart, with all our mind with all our soul, with all our strength, and we need to love our neighbors like ourselves. Let's not separate the two. Let's not do one and forget the other. Because if we are doing that, then we cannot call ourselves Christ-like. We will be known as his disciples if we love people. That's how we should be. Do not be like the religious leader who passed by the man who was robbed and left wounded. Do not be like that, uh, you know, the... Levi, who knew the laws and yet he passed the man by. Be like that man who had mercy and compassion and loved him, took care of the wounded man. Be like Jesus. It's time for a change. You know, the time will come and go by. Our lives will pass by. It may be too late to start loving, but the time is now. Let's start from today. Let's say, Lord, forgive us for many times when you have put us in front of people who needed to be loved. Maybe there's many instances when you came across people who needed to be loved and we did not do anything. Let's ask the Lord to forgive us. But let's make a pledge that God from, from today, from this morning, I will start loving people. I will start loving our neighbors. I will start loving all those who I come in contact with just like you did.